Good morning. Welcome to another session. Uh, our topic for today is all about foundations of business intelligence, databases, and information management. Maybe to begin our discussion, allow me to uh, state the objectives of this session. First, we're going to describe the principles of database management system and the features of a relational database and apply important database design principles. Also, we are going to evaluate the tools and technologies for providing information from databases to improve business performance and decision making. And lastly, assess the role of information policy, data administration, and data quality assurance in the management of organizational data resources. Now, there are many problems with the traditional file environment. First of them is data redundancy. Now, data redundancy refers to the presence of duplicate data in multiple data files, so the same data are stored in more than one place or location. Another is data inconsistency, when the same attribute may have different values, again because of data redundancy, wherein the same data are stored in more than one place or location, and when one place is updated and the other is not updated, therefore, we're going to have data inconsistency. The third problem is, of course, lack of flexibility. They can't deliver ad hoc reports or respond to unanticipated information requirements in a timely manner. So if you remember in our Imara Medical Center case, this is exactly the problem of Dr. Onyango. Number four, we have poor security. Access to and dissemination of information may be out of control because anybody can just have access to it. And lastly, lack of data sharing and availability. It is virtually impossible for information to be shared or access in a timely manner. So all of those problems have been solved by database management systems or DBMS. So DBMS is a software that allows organization to centralize data, manage them efficiently, and provide access to the stored data by application programs. So DBMS reduces data redundancy and is inconsistency by minimizing isolated files in which the same data are repeated. Access and availability of information will be increased and program development and maintenance costs reduce because users and including programmers can perform ad hoc queries of data in the database. So DBMS enables the organization to centrally manage data, their use and of course security because only people who are given rights and privileges will be able to access uh, data or maybe modify data in our database. Now let's introduce the idea of relational database. So relational databases represent data as two-dimensional columns or tables. So we have columns and we have rows. So popular relational databases are of course DB2, Oracle Database, Microsoft SQL Server, and Seabase. So let's talk about file organization concepts. Let's talk first about field, or this, these are the columns, okay? So each item of information in a table, okay? So employee number, first name, last name, these are all called fields or columns, or sometimes they are called attributes. Now we have records or tuples, a group of related fields. So for example, 001 is the employee number, Anna is the first name, Mugu is the last name. So in a class with 60 students, then we can have maybe 60 records. Table is a group of records. So an employee table is an example. So we can have 100 employees or 200 employees 
depending on how many people are there. And a database, of course, is a group of tables. So HR could be a database composed of many different tables under HR. So we can have an employee table, we can have a payroll table, we can have a training table, we can have also, say, attendance table. Now, in designing database, it is very important that, going, that we are going to normalize it. So normalization is the process of creating small, stable, yet flexible and adapted data structure from complex groups of data. Okay, so this is an example of an unnormalized relation for order. So in this uh, table, we have so many informations or attributes or columns. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 attributes. So we can now uh, normalize this by, you know, uh, dividing or separating them into smaller tables. So one of those uh, normalized tables created from that order table, we can have a part table wherein we have information pertaining to a particular part. So we have a part number, part name, unit price, and supplier number. And then we can have a supplier table. We, are, so we have a supplier number, supplier name, supplier street, city, country, and zip code. Everything about that supplier. And then we can have a line item table. We can have uh, attributes such as order number, part number, and part quantity. And then an order table where we can have an order number and an order date. So to be able to establish relationships with those smaller you know, tables, we need to have an entity relationship diagram. For example, a supplier provides parts and part is supplied by a supplier. And part is ordered in a line item and a line item contains parts. Okay, And a line item belongs to an order and order includes line item. Okay, so it could be, the relationship could be one is to many. For example, a supplier could supply many different parts, okay? And, and in an order, maybe there could be many different line items. So there are some basic operations of a relational database. First of them is select. So select creates a subset consisting of all records from a table. And the other one, of course, is join. Join combines relational tables to provide the user with more information than is available in individual tables. Okay, So remember, if we have a huge database, we, we can only extract anything that will satisfy a particular condition to be able to get some ad hoc reports. Okay, So let's have a, a practice of structured, structured query language. Okay, please refer to the table that is given to you prior to this lecture. Okay, so this is an example of store information table. All right, so in this store, uh, store information, what are the different fields of this table? All right, so as you can see, there are three different fields. We have store name, sales, and date. And then how many records are there? So we can count one two, three, four, five different records, right? Next, the select statement is used to select data from a database. So this is the syntax. When you say syntax, it is actually the format or the grammar, okay? So we'll say grammar, that's the format that we need to follow in order for the computer to be able to execute this statement, okay? So we have select column or column names, okay? If there will be more than one column, you can separate them by comma, and then from, and then the name of the table, and then followed by a semicolon. When you say select star from table, table name, uh, that means to say you wanted to display all the columns and all the rows. So select store name from store information. What do you think is the output considering this table? So you wanted to display the store name uh, from the store information. This is the name, this is the, the table. So the output would be 
simply you're going to list the five different store names okay select store name and then comma sales from store information so simply put you're going to display all the store names and you're going to display all the corresponding sales from this table all right so this is now the output or the result now the sql select distinct statement so in a table some of the columns may contain duplicate values this is not a problem however sometimes you will want to list only the different distinct values in a table so the distinct keyword can be used to return only distinct or different values the syntax would be select and then distinct and then column or column names from table name so if i say select distinct store name from store information this time the output would be los angeles san diego boston and new york so los angeles duplication is no longer displayed next is the where clause the where clause is used to extract only those records that fulfill a specified criterion so this we have now a condition so that now it will not display everything it will only display as, as we mentioned records that will fulfill a specified uh, criterion or condition so the syntax would be select column or column names from the table name where so where is the condition here we have a column name and then an operator and a value so in order to do that we need to understand first boolean expression so what is a boolean expression it is any expression that when evaluated results to either true or false okay in able to do that we need relational operators so we have an equal to we have greater than we have less than greater than or equal to less than or equal to or not equal to and of course we have also logical operators and operator if it is it is true if both are true or is true if any is true and not will simply return the complement or the opposite all right so meaning true and with true is true because both of them is true and then true and with false is already false because one of them is already false false and with true is still false false and with false is false let's have an example is 5 greater than 3 that's true is 5 equal to 3 that is false therefore true and with false is false that's correct next for the or operator true or with true is true okay as long as there is one true it's already true so true or with false is true false or with true is still true and then false or with false is false let's have an example okay let's change this one to or so is 5 greater than 3 it's true or 5 equal to 3 is false so therefore true or with false is true true or with false is true and of course we have the not so not true is false not false is true so if i say not 5 greater than 3 so if is 5 greater than 3 that's true and not true is false how about this one zero is greater than negative one is still true not true is false not false is is true okay now for this particular example we can have select store name from store information where sales is greater than 1000 so now is 1500 greater than 1000 that's true therefore los angeles will be displayed 250 is it greater than 1000 it's false it will not be displayed 300 greater than 1000 it's false boston is it greater than 1000 is false and new york is it greater than 2500 greater than 1000 is true therefore the output would be only two stores los angeles and new york all right so this one is more complicated okay so you can evaluate this one and give me the 
output. Next is the order by keyword. So the order by keyword is used to sort the results set by a specified column. So if you want to arrange them chronologically or alphabetically or in ascending or descending order, you use now order by. Okay, so order by keyword sort the, sort the records in ascending order by default. If you want to do it in descending, then you have to include the word desk. Okay? So this is the syntax. Select column, column names from table, order by column name or column names, either ascending or descending. Say select store name, sales from store information, order by sales, descending. So you wanted to arrange them in a descending order. In this particular case, the one that will be displayed first will be New York, all right, followed by Los Angeles, and then Boston, and then Los Angeles, and then San Diego, okay? The average function will simply return the average value of a numeric column. So the syntax would be select average and then the column name from table name. So when I say select average the sales from store information, we'll simply return the average of all these sales. The count function returns the number of values excluding null values, means we say null values are empty. Okay, so when I say select count and then the column name from the table name. So select count, store name from store information. What do you think is the output? All right, so the output would be five. It will just count one, two, three, four, five, all right? When I say select count distinct store name from store information, this time the output will be, yes, the output will be four because of the word distinct. The max function will simply return the largest value of the selected column. All right, so when we say select max sales from store information, it will simply return 2,500. The mean is the opposite. It will simply return the smallest value of the selected column. All right, so select mean sales from store information, I think will return 250. The sum function is similar to average, it's just that it will just add the total of the numeric column. So the syntax would be select sum column name from table name. Okay. The group by is a statement when use is in conjunction with the aggregate functions to group the result by one or more columns. Okay. So a syntax, uh, the, the format would be, say, select store name, and then you sum sales, okay? You add all the sales from store information, but you group them by store name. So in this particular case, we have two inputs or two rows for Los Angeles. So simply put, this 1,500 and 300 will be grouped according to the store name, all right? So this is now the output. So Los Angeles now will have a 1,800. And then San Diego, 250, Boston, 700, and then New York, 2,500. So let's have a practice, by the way. You get a pen and uh, write your answer. So what does SQL stand for? All right, so the correct answer is letter A. Which SQL statement is used to extract data from a database? All right, so the correct answer is select. With SQL, how do you select a column name, first name from a table named persons? Good, the correct answer is letter C. Select first name from persons. With SQL, how do you select all the columns from a table named persons? Good. The answer is letter A. Select star from persons. With SQL, how do you select all the records from a table named persons where the value of the column first name is Peter? Alright, so the correct answer is 
letter A. So select star from persons where first name is equal to Peter. Next, number six. The AND operator displays a record if all of the conditions listed are true. Very good. The correct answer is letter B. It's true. Number seven. With SQL, how do you select all the records from a table named persons where the first name is Peter and the last name is Jackson? All right. So there, the correct answer is letter A. Select star from persons where first name is equal to Peter and last name is equal to Jackson. Number eight. With which SQL statement is used to return only different values? Letter A, that's the answer. Select distinct. Which SQL keyword is used to sort the result set? The answer is letter C, order by. Number 10, with SQL, how can you return all the records from a table named person sorted descending by first name? All right, the answer is letter C. Select star from persons order by first name descending. 11. With SQL, how can you return the number of records in the persons table? All right, so select count star from persons. It's letter B. All right, now. Suppose we're going to query from two tables. Remember one of the functions or one of the things that we can do, we join, okay? So before we can do that, we have to understand primary key and foreign key. So what is a primary key? The primary key is the main identifier of a particular, you know, it's the column we're in, you know, two things. Characteristics of a primary key. One, the values in that primary key must be unique. Okay, so for example, part number, so we have 137, 145, 150, and so on. it is unique. Okay, no parts will have the same part number in the same way that you, you don't have uh, somebody who has a similar admission number or registration number. And so aside from its being unique, it must be, it can't be null. Okay, it can't be empty. So everybody or everything must have a value all right now how about a foreign key a foreign key similar to supplier number here is a foreign key now a foreign key is an attribute or a column that is the primary key of another table okay so the supplier number here is the primary key of supplier table all right so that's the foreign key so if you notice this supplier table this is the primary key supplier number all right now, example of an SQL query wherein we join now, you know, two tables. If you notice, the, the query is becoming longer and more complicated. All right. So if you don't have a clear or a very good background in SQL, it could be quite difficult now to uh, execute an SQL server uh, query. So sample, more sample queries, suppose your company sells four different products, that is nuts, bolts, washers, and screws in East, West, and Central Africa. So for you to be able to do a query like how many washers sold during the past quarter, then you have to, to query now the, the sales table, all right, considering now the item washers. And then now look for past quarter. So today, if today is May, then we are referring to the first quarter for the months of January, February, and March. Another sample query would be how many washers sold in each of your sales regions and compare actual results, results with projected sales. So again, this will be quite complicated uh, query already. Okay, so you have to consider now your sales for East, 
for your sales region for East, West, and Central Africa, you have to combine them. And then uh, you have to compare it with actual results. Okay. Compare the actual results with your production sales. So means to say uh, your sales divided by your production sales. If you're going to get a decimal, means to say your results is lower than your production sales. If you're going to get more than 100%, if you multiply by 100, means to say your sales are higher than your production sales. So another more complicated ad hoc report could be how many washers sold in East in June, how many compares with the previous month and the previous June, and how it compares with the sales forecast. Okay, so therefore there are many uh, other conditions to meet here. All right, so you see now, uh, getting ad hoc re reports is quite complicated if you don't have strong backgrounds in uh, SQL. Therefore, it leads me now to data warehouses and business intelligence. Data warehouse is a database that stores current and historical data of potential interest to decision makers throughout the company. So data originate in many core operational transaction systems such as sales, customer accounts, manufacturing, HR, and many others. Okay, so we are referring now to present, okay, current, and historical data. Now, if you notice, for us to be able to analyze data warehouses, and if you remember from our previous examples, it could be quite difficult if you don't have high technical skills in uh, structured query language. Therefore, to be able to do that, you know, uh, an application program, an information system has been developed. It's called business intelligence. So business intelligence, these are tools for consolidating, analyzing, and providing access to vast amounts of data to help users make better business decisions. So these are some of the capabilities of a business, uh, business intelligence system. One, BI systems have dashboards or graphical representation of state of the world. Okay, So dashboards were one screen summaries of important information and were often color coded. So if it green, it meant satisfactory status or progress. Yellow indicate caution. Red was a signal that action was necessary. Extraction or retrieval of data from one or more sources within a company. So a BI software uh, can extract data from the data warehouse, standalone databases or enterprise applications and other repositories. It's, it could combine data from several sources or only one source. Another capability is data mining or statistical analysis of historical data. So most BI software could automatically sift through large pools of data looking for correlations, trends, and patterns that might otherwise have escaped notice. And of course, just like any other application program, uh, BI systems have predefined reports. And now, if similar to the kind of example queries that we have uh, enumerated last time, you can now do ad hoc querying and reporting. In a BI system, you just have to specify the parameters and reports will be generated accordingly. Another capability of a business intelligence system is its ability to uh, you know, predict and analyze or predictive analytics or statistically based forecast of future events and trends. And also, another capability is event notification or alerts to users based on predefined occurrences. Example, managers are notified if customer satisfaction survey was returned with a low score. Distribution or sharing of BI output is done normally through web pages and emails. So these are just some sample questions that can be answered using BI systems. 
what additional products could we be selling to each of our customers? Another would be which of our current customers are we most likely to lose? All right. So BI systems are able to analyze the buying pattern, the buying behavior of different customers. And by doing so, uh, customers who did not yet buy that same product that were bought by other customers can be, you know, uh, identified. And then, it, you know, as a marketer, as a salesperson, you should be able to propose or, you know, uh, give a proposal to these customers. Because according to your analysis, customers with the same attributes, the same behaviors, also bought this product. Okay, another would be which of our current customers are we most likely to lose? Now look on, looking at the historical data and uh, analyzing the buying behavior, the buying patterns of your customers, you should be able to identify, distinguish customers that you are most likely to lose. And by having those kind of information, you as the sales manager should could make some uh, can be more proactive and reach out to these customers. So by looking so, uh, you are able now to do some remedial actions or some uh, proactive actions. And in return, therefore, it could potentially, you know, uh, impact your sales and your strategy. Therefore, uh, if we are able to answer these two strategic questions, therefore, we can say that BI systems are strategic in nature. All right, so um, that's it. And uh, I hope you learned something from our lecture and presentation again today. If you have some questions, feel free to leave your comment down below.